Hi, Chuck Holly from West Marine. You know, sometimes uh, boaters who are uh, just learning how to go out and navigate look at our navigation section in West Marine and they get a little bit confused because there are an awful lot of specific tools that are used for plotting on charts or for figure, figuring out navigational problems. So I'd like to go through a couple of those really quickly and show you how they're used. One of the first and most useful is a time speed distance calculator. In this case, one made by Weems and Plath. This is a neat way, before we had electronic calculators, a lot of people use circular slide rules like this one to calculate the uh, third variable in a time speed distance problem. So the way that works, if you know your time and your speed, you can calculate your distance. If you know your distance and your time, you can calculate your speed and so forth. So the way this works is that you put the two knowns um, it, in one of these, in, or two of these index positions. For example, you can put the distance either in nautical miles or in yards around this outside disk, and you can read it right where this arrow is. And then you set either your speed or your time on the inside dials, and you read the one that you don't know. So for example, I can set this up and say that I'm going 70 miles, and I'm going at a speed of 14 knots, and this indicates that it's going to take five hours to get there. Time speed distance calculator, really, really handy for figuring out the third variable. Another nice item is a set of parallel rules. Parallel rules are used to transfer a course either from a compass rose to the chart or from the chart to the compass rose so that you can measure uh, angles of either bearings on objects or the course that you're following. The way they work is that they're two clear plastic uh, rulers which are connected by these aluminum connectors and no matter how much you move them they stay, stay parallel to one another. On the back side they have little cork dots which provide friction so that when you put them on the chart it doesn't skid all over the place. So theoretically what you would do is place them along a course line that you wanted to figure out the angle of and then move them in little steps like this over to a compass rose and then you can read the course right off the compass rose. Or, for example, if you were using a hand bearing compass and you had a compass bearing on a known object, you could take that magnetic bearing and move, walk it back over to the object and draw a, a line of position from that item. So parallel rules, kind of a basic part of the navigator's toolkit. Another item, which is a little misunderstood, is a uh, plotter, in this case one that has a roller on the bottom of it. Now a plotter by itself is very useful. The idea is that you can put this up against a course line and move it until this little bullet in the center and a line of latitude or longitude intersects this compass rose and what it does you can read directly off the plotter what the course is. Now that's going to be in true because you're using lines of latitude and longitude and then you have to convert to magnetic if that's what you want to do. The advantage of having a course plotter on it with a roller is that you place it on the course line and then you can just roll it until a line of latitude or longitude intersects the bullet. Otherwise, what you end up having to do is to sort of slide it around on the chart. So we recommend rolling plotters. I know it didn't sound like it was easy to use, but it's actually quite easy to use. A 15-year-old can use it, assuming he or she is going to calculus. Uh, here's a set of, these are ultralight dividers. Dividers come in two different types. We're used to using compasses where you put the center point in the center of a circle and you draw a circle around it. Well, that isn't how dividers are used on boats. Dividers on boats are used for measuring distances. So for example, if I want to know how long Santa Cruz Island is, I can set my dividers up to be just the length of Santa Cruz Island, right in there, and then I can transfer that distance out to the side and using the, la the uh, latitude scale I can find out that Santa Cruz Island is just about 20 nautical miles from east to west. Similarly, if I want to transfer a distance, if I want to know how far 50 miles is, I can open the points on the dividers until I have uh, 50 minutes of arc, and then that's exactly 50 nautical miles, and I can transfer that distance. Or I can even walk that distance along and measure distances in increments of 50 miles. So these are ultralight dividers, really, really a nice design, very, very sharp points. Another item that's fun to play with on board, but unfortunately they're not used as much anymore, is a sextant. 
I think this is the first product that Davis Instruments ever brought to market. This is the Davis Mark III Sextant, and it's what I learned how to navigate with. This is a relatively inexpensive plastic sextant that allows you to measure the angle of celestial items above the horizon by moving this index arm, or you can use it horizontally for measuring the horizontal angle between two land objects. And using that angle, you can figure out how far offshore you are from those land objects. It uses a vernier scale on the bottom. This isn't quite as accurate as a micrometer scale, but it allows you to measure down to two minutes of arc, or one thirtieth of a degree. And you do this by moving the arc or the index arm to where you want, and then figuring out which one, which pair of lines lines up, and you can interpolate a degree down to one in thirty parts. It has two horizon uh, shades, these little plastic shades, as well as two index shades up here, so that you can use it for star shots, daytime shots, sun shots, etc. All of this very inexpensive and a great training tool. Well, one of the challenges with celestial navigation is knowing what star you're looking at. And this is uh, one thing when you're in the northern hemisphere and you're used to looking up and seeing the Big Dipper or or some minor or something like that. It's another thing when you go across the ocean to an unfamiliar spot. So the classic way for solving this for years, before we used computers to tell us where the stars were, was the Starfinder 2102D. This is a neat mechanical means of calculating star positions and it uses a variety of plastic discs depending on your latitude combined with this white disc which works for the southern hemisphere or for the northern hemisphere. So on it, you'll find the 57 navigational stars, which is what you use when you're doing sight reductions using stars. So I can rotate this around to give me the approximate, uh, <laughs> if I put the time of year and the date, or the time of day and the date on the outside ring, I can then figure out what the location of the 57 navigational stars are using this circular plot. And in this case, I put in the disk for 35 degrees north because I'm currently at 37 degrees north. So this gives me a mechanical way to identify stars any place in the world at any time, assuming it's nighttime. So this is the 2102D Starfinder. The final item is a nice hand bearing compass. This is one that's been around for a long time. This is the Mini 2000 and it's what we call a hockey puck compass because it's shaped an awful lot like a hockey puck and you wear it around your neck. Now a lot of compasses when you use them you hold them out at arm's length and it's kind of hard to align the compass veins and look at the compass card and everything's dancing around and frankly they're not that accurate. With this type of compass you hold it right up to your eye and you sight across the top of it. And it's very difficult to show this in a video, but what happens is that they use what's called an infinity prism to project the compass card as if it's on the horizon. And so by looking at it, I can see very accurately, accurate to probably a degree or two, what the bearing, the magnetic bearing is to an object. Very, very easy to use, and it has a built-in night light so that it works at night when you're trying to take a bearing on a lighthouse or whatever you can see at night when you're doing coastal cruising. So the Mini 2000, probably my favorite hand bearing compass, very rugged and very compact. You can wear it around your neck when you're sailing or racing. One other use for a hand bearing compass is for doing collision bearings on a vessel that's approaching you. If you take a bearing on that vessel, and let's say it's 20 degrees, and over time you take another bearing on that vessel and it's still 20 degrees and you're moving towards each other, you're going to collide with that vessel. If the vessel changes, you know that you're going to pass either in front or astern of that vessel. So I hope that this brief summary has given you some idea of what these tools are used for. They're all very useful. It's a great idea to have a basic knowledge of them. And frankly, navigation is a heck of a lot of fun. And if you don't own a boat, it can get you invited on boats if you tell them that you know how to navigate. So the electronics are fine, but everybody should have a basic understanding of how to navigate with paper charts using plotters, parallel rolls, hand bearing compasses, possibly a little plastic sextant for horizontal angles, and dividers. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we hope you find all these items at West Marine.